Ladies and gentlemen, the Scarlet and Violet Teal Mask DLC has brought so many fun things to the game that competitive Pokemon is just in a spot right now that is honestly insane. It is so much fun and I'm fully trying to take advantage of all this new stuff. With that being said, this is one of the most insane matches I've had in this game. It, you're not going to believe how this one ends and we've got some really cool strategies going on here. This one is against my good friend Cypher, he also is a YouTuber. His link will be in the description, definitely check that out if you have a second. And also, leave a like on the video if you do enjoy, I really appreciate all the support on these videos. And let's get into it. Alright, so here's the thing, I'm expecting him to lead off with his Gliscor as a Stealth Rock lead. Boom, big meaty claws. As I decide to lead off with my Veiny Clown with Cinder Blocks. <laughs> and this is exactly the matchup I wanted. The reason for this is because I would like to get a knockoff before this thing's Toxic Orb is able to activate. Poison Heal Gliscor is such an annoying bulky Pokemon that if you can get rid of that heal, it, it definitely helps out. So, he actually ends up going for a knockoff, he tells me to knock it off, and then right after that I tell him to knock it off. And it's actually kind of a funny interaction because he gets rid of my Flame Orb, I get rid of his Toxic Orb, and now neither of us are gonna get our status abilities as we're a couple of Orbless dudes just chilling. So, you may be thinking to yourself, why does this man have an Alolan Golem on his team? And I'll tell you, because this thing is truly the GOAT. He's got a beard and a weird electric thing on his back. And it has a really cool strategy behind it, at least on this team. So what I'm gonna do is expect him to go for the Stealth Rock here. It's imperative that I come in before the Stealth Rock happens uh, so that I don't actually break my sturdy ability. So he does end up going for that Stealth Rock, which is perfect. And now Golem is ready to party. I'll tell you what, I may have stubby ass arms, but I've got a plan. So I'm basically sitting over here looking like I'm on a silver platter to take an earthquake. I'm baiting him to go for the earthquake, knock me down to sturdy. And my plan is to then kill this thing with a counter. Exactly that happens, it goes for that Earthquake, I do live it with one, and the counter is going to be able to knock out the Gliscor, which you know, is a pretty annoying Pokemon out of the way, it did get its Stealth Rock up, but this Golem is actually just getting going. So in the DLC, they actually brought back one of my favorite all-time berries, and that is the Custap Berry. So, what happens here is, since I'm at low HP, I'm actually going to be able to go first on a turn that I ordinarily would not. So the plan is, essentially on this hamster to go boom. So, <laughs> that thing is clearly faster, but since I'm slower and I'm at low HP thanks to Sturdy, Custat Berry does activate. And this has gotta be the worst time to be a hamster because that thing is definitely not living that. So I'm able to effectively take out two Pokemon with the Alolan Golem, uh, which is amazing and always fun for Custat Berry to do stuff. Only thing is I wish I was able to get up Stealth Rock on his side of the field just because uh, it, would, it would actually be pretty helpful, but I just saw more value in being able to take care of that thing. It was likely going to go for an aura wheel and grab a speed boost and just kind of be annoying. So, now we got ourselves an empty battlefield to send out whatever we would like onto. You would think the battlefield would just be kind of rubble at this point, but don't worry. The grannies in the background are okay. So, he decides to go into the Ogre Pond as I decide to go into Torterra. And this is actually kind of the matchup I want. Now, the reason for this is because I can go into a Terra Fire and then go for a Shell Smash. Knowing that he's going to go for the Ivy Cudgel, I should be able to take one, uh, considering it is resisted, after I go Fire-type. Go for a Shell Smash, then be faster, and then just Loaded Dice, Rock Blast, everything into Oblivion. So, uh, he is actually going to end up going for the Terra. Of course, you know, Ogre Pond with its Terra does get a crazy-ass Mask action, and it also does get the Embody Aspect, which gives it a nice and powerful little attack boost. So... Uh, Torterra, luckily, is a pretty thick little fella. I mean, look at the, the girth on this dude. It should be able to take an attack even with that attack boost. Uh, at least with, you know, the, the Terra Fire. So, I put some candles on my tree. Seems like a fire hazard, but I'm feeling good at this point because I know after a Shell Smash, I actually outspeed, I believe, everything on his team, uh, barring anything with a speed boost. So, he does go for that Ivy Cudgel, smacks me with a stick. I am able to live that nicely uh, and now go for that Shell Smash. So, this gives me... Plus two speed, plus two physical attack, and Torterra could not be in a better spot. Uh, Torterra did actually also get access to Shell Smash in the DLC, so thank you very much Game Freak for making Torterra uh, way better. Honestly, this thing is definitely a threat now. It's a little bit slow, but honestly, a lot of the time with Shell Smash, you can outspeed stuff. So, um, I'm going to go for the Rock Blast here. I'm thinking pretty much nothing wants to deal with this, except for one dude, and that is this absolute asshole. Fucking prehistoric Suicune is the bane of my existence, especially because of this exact situation right here. It does actually carry um, the booster energy to activate Protosynthesis and give it a speed boost. Remember how I mentioned I was faster than everything, barring them having a speed boost? That is the situation where now I am still slower. So uh, <laughs> the booster energy does allow this thing to outspeed me, but I do actually get five hits on my Rock Blast, which with one critical hit on those five would have knocked this thing out. But Torterra looks like 
it's not going to be able to kind of finish the absolute, you know, bowling ball demolition I was expecting. But I am able to at least whittle the Walking Wake down. I do kind of have to let this thing go down at this point because I don't have a switch into uh, Walking Wake, really. So Torterra does die, but, you know, it was almost there. Literally, this, if this thing wasn't booster energy, it was kind of just Torterra running through this guy. So um, that's honestly fine. I now have a free switch into whatever I would like. I have a couple different options. I decided to go in con into Conkeldur, mostly just because... Uh, this thing with the speed boost is, is faster than everything that I have in a Hydro Steam hurts a lot. So I decided to go into Conk, and I can basically just knock this thing out with a nice little mock punch. So this Walking Wake really is an issue to my team, and I expect him to likely switch, but I kind of just have to go for mock punch here uh, to be able to finish this thing off. So I'm going to click that mock punch. He is going to end up switching out and save that thing for later. It is kind of his win condition. Uh, and I'm going to have to try to play around that as carefully as possible. Considering he does have the nine tails on his team, it actually is going to be able to get that Protosynthesis later and grab another speed boost, so uh, very scary. But in comes the Okie Dogie. This thing comes out with his tongue flapping. I don't I don't know about this Pokemon, I'm going to be honest. Uh, kind of just a, a weird dude. But goes for the knockoff here. Uh, I am actually, in fact, already knocked off, but uh, <laughs> hilariously enough, it does actually activate its Toxic Chain ability, which ends up helping Conkeldur. The reason for that is because I am Guts. I was originally uh, Flame Orb, but him giving me a poison is the funniest shit ever, and now I do have my Guts again, so hey, that's pretty nice. I also am looking at that Mach Punch damage from when it switched in wasn't a lot, but now that I have Guts, uh, a Mach Punch actually should be able to kill. Uh, so he likely went for a knockoff on that first turn, just expecting a switch, but Conkeldur stayed in and uh, was rewarded by being poisoned, so... A mock punch does take care of the Okie Dogie, which has got to be the lamest Pokemon name of all time. And now he gets a free switch. So back comes the Ogre Pond, which is another huge problem to deal with. Um, I do have a Choice Scarf Chandelure on my team who should be able to finish this thing off if I can get some chip. So my main plan here is to basically just click mock punch, get as much chip damage as possible, which it turns out with a critical hit, you know, does do a lot. And he actually finishes me off there with the play rough. So I've got this thing down to range where I'm honestly not super afraid of it now. And it's unfortunate to lose Conkeldur because Mach Punch would have been great against the uh, Walking Wake. But my now plan is basically to go into Empoleon and see if I can get this thing enough speed uh, to try to get a little late game sweep action. So I may be a flightless bird, but this boy fly as hell. I'm going to go for that agility knowing that I can take at least one attack from this thing. Uh, he goes for the Horn Leech and it knocks me down to 9 HP. Now unfortunately, I am actually a Life Orb Empoleon, and at this point I was hoping that I was going to be able to live with enough to kind of just get a few attacks off, but it's not looking like it's possible. I do get that agility off, however, and now I can just kind of finish this thing off uh, with a Hydro Pump. Thank God it connects, and down goes the Ogre Pond, and that is basically one of the scariest Pokemon in the game right now out of the way. Um, unfortunately, my Sinnoh starters are having a rough go at it because the Life Orb does just kill me, and we've got ourselves another empty battlefield situation. So. Uh, down goes Napoleon, and uh, now I have to decide how I win this late game. So he has two Pokemon left. I have two Pokemon left. He is working with the Ninetales and the Walking Wake. So I do have a pretty speedy dude in Monkey Dory here. Unfortunately, Monkey Dory is not going to be able to outspeed Walking Wake in the sun. And I know he's probably going to go Ninetales here, so I can't really go Chandelure. So I decide to go into the Monkey as he decides to bring in the Ninetales. Looking uh, majestic as shit. Nice and shiny, as Roger actually has a pretty decent matchup here with the choice specs. I know I can easily two-hit KO and likely take an attack from this thing, but now I'm just mainly concerned about that walking wake. And I'm feeling like, damn, I may have actually misplayed and not keeping Conkeldur around, but I go for the sludge wave here. It's going to do over half, but he actually ends up going for the healing wish. And I'm thinking, aw, shit. It is absolutely going down because now <laughs> walking wake comes in and he's going to get back to full health, which is... Not good. If you're wondering if that's good, it's not. If, if you're me, it's not good. So in comes Walking Wake, just kind of basks in the sun here. It's not only going to get back to full health, but it's also going to activate uh, that their Protosynthesis to give it a speed boost, which will allow it to outspeed Choice Scarf Chandelure. And I am in the face. I'm a fucking monkey in the face of a dinosaur here. Never been more scared. So same goes for the Hydro Steam. Check this out. Monkey Dory lives it with 25 HP, which is absolutely insane allows me to go for the Sludge Wave. And not only that, but Toxic Chain activates. This thing's ability is basically Poison Touch, but for special attacks. And that is the craziest interaction that could have possibly happened here. 
and now the game is essentially mine because next turn this thing dies to the poison and Toxic Chain has never come in more clutch. Truly, the greatest ability ever. Monkey Dory, you are my favorite. Uh, I do end up dying to the Hydra Steam, but this thing dies to that poison. So, that has got to be the craziest battle I've had in a long time. And uh, that was a really fun one. I honestly had a really good time with that. And hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, remember, hey, hit that like button. I do appreciate it. And leave a comment about some of the new stuff that you would like to see me kind of uh, showcase and mess around with. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.